it's warming up before the big race and then they went out in the woods where they're going to spend the next hour and a half watching the women in action so this is a place called i think this is the worry gill section and um, this is lots of tight twisty drops and into a big gully it's like a pinball alley that goes for about 600 meters really exciting and fast the rider says it's a little bit scary because there's so many rocks and dark roots that they can't really see and they're just hitting it flat out and having to hang on and uh, right here we are as you can see the sun coming out the sun but you've got clouds in the background so it's on and off here all day it was raining just before the start and now it looks like it's a, a bright sunny day but I can assure you it's only about 13 degrees Celsius and uh, very, very windy. Julie Brissett going through there, closely followed by Sabine Spitz, and they're coming down through the A and B line. Sometimes in traffic, a rider will take the B line just to make sure that she doesn't get caught up behind a rider that has a problem on the A line. Uh, but there's Ren Chen one leading, and looks like Natalie Schneider in behind her, followed by Lenny Byberg. So Ren Chen one has taken the lead. Schneider, who won the sprint eliminator the other day, the pro eliminator. There's our world champion, Voschowska, followed by Brissett. There goes uh, the Italian national champion. And uh, of course, that's that's Eva in sitting in Eva Lechner sitting there. And uh, the green colours, you'll see there. We haven't seen the Marita green colours up towards the front of the women's race for quite some time. Good Marita Dala going through as well. The rest of the riders streaming through. Most of the riders trying to select tyres today that will give them. Uh, traction in the in the tricky sections but a lot of rolling speed because there are two or three open road sections and they need the speed there so uh, riders such as uh, Lenny Byberg opting for something called a fast track on the front uh, running that at about um, well cutting the center knob she told me is running a 2.0 on the front and running the Renegade 1.95 on the rear uh, but really looking for rolling speed. Now here she goes down, this is Ren Cheng Wan showing her skill down into the gully. This is, you see the ferns and the greenness down here. Very, very moist as Natalie Schneider goes in behind her in second and Lenny Byberg in third. Fourth there you got Maya Voschowska, then Julie Bresset, that's your top five. And sixth place looks like Eva Lechner sitting, looking very good there in front of Sabine Spit and moved up one spot. Catherine Pendrell going through now. And there goes Gunnar Dala. All of them going for the A-line here, a lot steeper. Annie Lars sitting up in there as well. So Annie Lars having a great start. That's the under-23 rider. This is only her second year in under-23. And another one of the Lunar riders. The Lunar team celebrating 10 years as a team. They started in 2001 and uh, pretty much when uh, Alison Dunlap won the World Championships there in Vail. Uh, the World Championships, which were marred by September 11, and the team started then, and here they are 10 years later, still racing and still very much at the front of the field. A great job by uh, Valdek and his crew, which is very professional women's team, women's only team. They're one of the first to do that, and now there are quite a few. CCC and uh, Ghost and High Bike, women only race teams. Well, some of them do have uh, men at a little bit lower rank, but their star athletes are indeed the women. Forestry Commission done an amazing job here actually. We're really right in the center of the forest. It's about a, about a seven or eight kilometer drive from the road into the forest. And then you find this great big open area where uh, the Greenfield Tech area is set up and all of the facilities. And uh, really is quite a marvelous job they've done with the track. And uh, walking the course yesterday, uh, very impressive uh, work that they've done to maintain the track, not only for the riders to use here, but for the public to use. Uh, year in year out and uh, they've had a lot of citizen races a lot of fun races here this week uh, it's a very big cycling event for the UK here this weekend and also after this weekend tomorrow uh, let's see the 23rd I believe is a uh, development day at the London Olympic site many of the teams heading down on private invitation by the London Olympic Committee to check out the track for 2012 and uh, get it a little bit ridden in and also to give some feedback to the organizers on the foreground here there is a b-line we're seeing some riders going towards us there in front of the crowd that's the b-line in case there's some traffic or an incident on the a-line and in a little while we're going to see them come back through here right now you can see in the top part of your screen that's the climb out of this section 
now we're back at Medusa's. Now this is a drop of about uh, eight switchbacks. There's a couple of AV lines here. We can see, I think it's our leader or our lead moto coming into shot now. Looks like the lead moto. So for the fans here at the bottom of this, there's a uh, cafeteria and a big area, big screen. It's very entertaining for the crowd. And it's also where our tech zone two is located. And uh, that's where the riders will pick up some food and uh, tech support if they need it on the other part. Of course, it's down near the start finish. So two tech zones, one here at the bottom of the juices and the other one at the start finish. The track about six kilometers long. Uh, six kilometers and 30 meters to be precise and in total today uh, they'll be doing five laps so about uh, 32 kilometers uh, for the race distance today and 38 for the men because they'll do six laps and the start line. so we're waiting on the leader see if Reng Chen Wan is going to try and make it two for two and for the first time in her career win two World Cups in the same year she has won four World Cups and uh, communication a little bit tricky with Ren, she doesn't speak any English, uh, she travels with a translator, uh, but we did get some stuff out of her uh, this week and uh, she really is looking forward to trying to win the overall with the Olympics next year. A lot of people saying that the Chinese disappeared after the Olympics, but that's not entirely true. She did finish 15th at the World Championships last year. Oh, she's down, she slipped front wheel out there, she's gone down, and it's a lot steeper than it looks there, and uh, she's swashed out the front wheel. Now that's going to rattle her a little bit, she is coming to the tech zone, she's got Natalie Schneider right on her tail now. So Schneider, the winner in Champery last year, catching right up under the tail of Renchen won. So any advantage that she was trying to build, she has now lost just by washing out the front wheel there. And as I was saying before, the Chinese uh, national program was very, very strong before Beijing, and they had some great results leading up to the Games, but unfortunately didn't get the medal they were looking for. But to her credit, she finished fifth, and that is not a bad result at all. The Olympics didn't disappear entirely. In 2009, came back and won that round in Offenburg, and then in 2010, struggled a little bit, but did have a uh, 15th place at Mont saint uh, after she did win the world title in 2623. So Ren Cheng won, now one of the top 15 women of all time in women's cross country, and despite the fact that uh, not that much is known about her, uh, she's born in the Zhengzhou province of, uh, of China and she's been a member of the national team for six years now and certainly doing China very proud by being in front of this field and uh, we'll just see if that little crash has rattled her a little bit it sometimes can throw you off your momentum just a little bit but uh, she's got incentive there with Natalie Schneider sitting right in behind her now that's Maya Wachowski's teammate there it looks like plate number I picked that up, looked like it was 49. One of the CCC riders going through. And uh, yeah, that is Alexandra Davidovich uh, going through plate number 49. She also competed, all three of the uh, CCC riders competed in the Pro Elimino the other night. And I must say it was a huge turnout for the crowds down there, hanging out of the pubs and outside on the footpaths. And uh, Brian Lopes was racing, and we'll see actually Brian Lopes racing in the cross country later today. And, uh, but it's good to see a good mix of riders participating. Um, and the crowd really, really did get into it. As I mentioned, Natalie Schneider winning that in the women's. So you can see the riders wending their way down through this eight switchback section of Medusa. And uh, really is a great spot for the spectators. They can see riders here for a long time. And also for the leaders, or oh, sorry, the person chasing a leader can look down and just see how many switchbacks away is a lead rider from them or whatever the gap is on the rider ahead of them. As I mentioned before, 83 starters. Trying to pick up and see if we see uh, Annika Beerton or Tracy Mosley come through. Two of the top gravity riders racing here today in the World Cup cross country. Tracy mainly because it's in her home country and as a reigning world champion has been out there trying to celebrate all forms of cycling this year, racing the Cape Epic and uh, doing marathon downhills and uh, all sorts of stuff, basically celebrating the sport she loves in all of its forms and having a great time here doing the Pro Eliminator. Uh, on Friday night where she picked up 7th place and uh, right now racing for Team GB in the Cross Country World Cup. I think uh, Annika Beerton finished 54th it was in Peter Maritzburg and uh, somewhere around there after being uh, pulled out but uh, still managed to pick up some points.
after this section of Medusa, the riders will start to head towards the, uh, the start finish area. But to do that, they have to go along a very, very tough road up towards Jingleby Summit. There is a very tough climb after this. They go up to Jingleby Summit and work their way through some uh, single track and back down towards where we saw the riders descending in uh, descending into Worry Gill. So they'll get past that area. This is, the, as I mentioned before, this is the tech zone. Tech zone two at the bottom of Medusa's. They head out from here on a long climb, just disappearing out of shot there in your upper screen. Well, it looks like we've got a problem here for one of the riders. Looks like number 17 coming in now. So that is a problem there for Tanya Zakelj. So she's got a puncture. She's picked that up. It is a very stony course, and it is possible to pick up some punctures. And Tanya Zakelj now looking for a spare wheel. And that's a big problem for her, the Slovenian. She was sitting 17th, obviously, in the uh, overall classification. That's why she has plate number 17. And uh, she was looking to move up on that position. And now having to deal with a puncture here in the tech area. And uh, anyway, back now with the leaders. This is Reng Chen Wan in the leader's jersey of the uh, UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. Plate number one, yellow, and climbing very well up through here. So this is this is one of the climbing sections that I mentioned before. And uh, no, actually, this is back round now to Worry Gill. So this is where there's two lines. There's a technical line there that the girls on the uh, far side have taken, but you have to dismount. And I was talking with some riders last night about this line on the right-hand side, or their right-hand side, is actually a little bit longer, but faster and more efficient than having to get off and portage the bike. So I think you'll see quite a few more riders trying to use that. Even though it looks a little bit longer, it is actually a little bit more efficient. There's only one little obstacle on it, and it's probably only a second longer when you come at it with speed. It looks like uh, Emily Batty and Gunrita Dale are both with ponytails there fighting it out, and uh, just behind them, Annie Last. crowd waiting for them at the top of the hill. And this is with about 1.5 kilometers to go back into the start finish area. Ring Chen Wan has managed to pull away again on Schneider. So, yeah, again, the riders battling up through this section. I'm really not convinced that this is the most efficient way to get up here. We saw Ring Chen Wan go off to her right hand side to our foreground. And we see another rider doing that. That's uh, the Seuss coming through. And uh, I honestly think that she's managed to maintain her rhythm and pick up a couple of spots as well. So I don't know if some of the team managers might be watching that for the men's race, uh, but that was definitely the way I looked at it yesterday. Felt that the right-hand side might be a little bit more efficient and easier, especially if there's traffic. A lot of the men can ride up through this section, but it is an odd one for you get, not getting your crags to hit on the rocks. And uh, it's a little bit trialsy, but if you hit it just right, you can really nail it. But you can see there the riders electing to go to the right-hand side because of traffic concerns, and they will pick up one or two spots by doing so. And uh, just after this, you crest a bit of a climb, and I think you might find that on the last lap, if we see a, a Schurter and Absalon, and there's a replay now, Ring going down. Let's see how quickly she regroups here. Now she battles a little bit to get her foot back into the pedals not losing any skin there but certainly just rattling her for a, a few moments but uh, going out on the lead again now and looking very strong as we see Gunrita Dala, Emily Batty and Annie Last. Emily Batty under 23 rider from last year now an elite rider and Annie Last in her under 23 category chasing down Julie Brissette. Moving from plate number 20 she's moving up to the top 10 so Great start and a lot of motivation for Annie Lars here with many, many British supporters wishing her all the best here. That looks like the Max's Rocky Mountain rider Murray Ellen Promont going through there as well. The sun is out but it is still very, very windy outside. There looks like one of the uh, Chinese teammates going through there as well. The Ring Chen Wan not alone this week, it appears. She was alone down in South Africa uh, representing her country, but so i pick up for you uh, who that uh, second Chinese writer is. Um, 
often used to get the Chinese team colours and the Spanish colours mixed up, both red and yellow. I'll try and make sure that is definitely a Chinese rider that we've called for you. But looking down the list, I can't see that number plate, but we'll try and pick it up a bit later for you. But right now we're getting ready to welcome the riders in at the end of uh, lap number one. And as you remember, it was Lenny Byberg that led the start loop. And it looks like we got a bit, no, it was going to a replay there, but now we're back with live action, and that's Natalie Schneider. Should be sitting in second place, Nat Natalie. Well, actually, a little bit further back now. Looks like Eva Lechner has moved up in front of her, so Eva Lechner now sitting in second place.